All right, everybody. Welcome to the morning meeting. It is the 17th of January 2024. Retail sales numbers will be published an hour before the open. That's roughly 10 minutes as I'm recording this. So we'll be keeping an eye on those retail sales and see if there's anything surprising that we might get on the charts intraday that we can potentially trade. I don't think we will. The retail sales are not really in the focus of, of the markets when it comes to macro data these days. Um, if we look at other stuff for today, we have some Fed members holding speeches and that's pretty much it. And then tomorrow there will be building permits. And that's pretty much that for tomorrow. And then on Friday, Michigan consumer sentiment. So all these things are not biggies, um, but we should be aware of them nonetheless. So let's take a look here at the S on the daily chart. So yesterday, a little bit of weakness, but then market pushed back up. Um, today, so far in pre-market, it's been quite a move. Um, so, you know, it's... Uh, that's, that's basically already formed like a daily candle just in pre-market. Right? But we'll see what else we might get today. The VIX is a little bit elevated. You can see it's up 5%, 14.5%. That's still not much. And I guess the most important thing still, EURUSD is leading the way. Weakness for equities could continue more to the downside. This is the butterfly pattern. That's what I'm looking at these days. Not so much DXY. DXY is coming up here to a 618. This can take a few more days though. And then the markets might eventually go up a little bit. So it's fairly simple what to look at. I'm not going to make a science out of it. So that's basically what we have. So let's clean up the chart a little bit from yesterday like so last week's high last week's low still same levels obviously not going to change till the end of the week and what we're going to do now is we're going to put yesterday's um yesterday's session range in terms of fips we're just going to put this sorry i'm 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 already in the wrong spot this is yesterday then you can see this morning we were trying to you know hold that 618 that didn't really work so i don't i don't think these levels are going to be interesting today intraday i, I don't think so i would rather see price action not come back up during like the end of the day and then ease back again this should just have closed low and then if we had also opened at a lower level today, then a run up to 618 might be interesting. But since we already were there earlier today, um, I'm not interested in that level. What is more interesting are the extensions. However, since we already had such a big move now in the in, in pre-market, and yes, biggest relative, but it's a significant move nonetheless. Um, we already touched the 1272 extension down here. Right, so we did this this morning and then it started reversing. Um, since you already touched 1272, I'm less interested in 1414. Yeah. You can also see that there's a bit of conf yeah, not, not much confluence, but you can see also with this low here, right? Maybe it played a role, but it's not very accurate, obviously. And but you can see the, the low from here, right? Even though we didn't touch it across. Um, it's still somewhat, somewhat interesting, I would argue, right? Maybe we can just draw this, this low, like so. But we already basically eased back today um, from that level. We look at um, anything to the upside. I think it's not likely when I reach that today I don't see confluency at all. So um, days where you have um, 
stronger pre-market moves, trending moves, and that's undeniably a trend right down here, and maybe it will continue. You, you cannot always expect too much for the regular session. So you might have to confine yourself a little bit with smaller moves in the regular session, more chop, because basically the pre-market has already determined direction. Let's take a look at the um, NQ. We'll clean that up as well from yesterday. And you can see there's also nothing you know, intraday really. But the extensions here have not been reached and you can see there's nice confluence here at 1272. So I'm going to put an alert. This looks pretty good. And that's pretty much it on that side. And if we get a miracle and we go higher, we would take out a lot of levels um, and I don't think we'll see that today. I don't think we're going to have that much of a move. Not after that pre-market move. Right? YM also cleaning up, cleaning house. We need to check which of the daily gaps are still thing. They both are. And then even this morning, we have another gap now. These are very important, these gaps. If you look at yesterday in the NQ, the gap was what made you money yesterday, right? So I'm just going to extend these gaps here so we can keep an eye on them. That'd be boring to watch, but that's what it is. There we are. And this one also, we should not lose sight of this one either. Like this, right? Okay. So that's what that looks like on the daily. So that's all good. And then same thing here. Now we have to really pay attention. This was the high yesterday. So here it's more interesting to maybe get a reversal also into 618 so i'm going to put an alert and then obviously the daily gap here um price might attempt to close the gap or test it so i'm going to put an alert as well so far there's a weaker cross level right here that's coming from this low this weekly low and so far, price has respected it. That's why it's there. In terms of extensions to the downside, there isn't much confluence here with anything. But if we get there, I want to know. So another alert needs to be added. And then the upside, again, I don't think we'll see that much of a move today. So we'll keep that as where it is. And then finally, the Russell. Let's see if we can get rid of this thing. Yep. Let's check the dailies here as well. This is still a given. That's still a gap. Hourly chart extension from yesterday. We probably already took it out. Yes, so we went to 1414 already. But here, same thing as, as, as in the YM, we might go up to 618. And then you can see there's also daily across. We just check that out. Daily across was from here, but it got covered. So we're going to remove that. And then down here, this is last week's low, so that's going to stay in place. We took out the low without any major issues, basically. And this here was also a daily across. 
but we have taken this out so significantly. I, I don't think this will be important anymore, so I'm going to get rid of that. We don't want to have too, too much junk on these charts. Okay, so less than a minute till retail sales come out. So what I'm going to do is, let me just actually go to the ES five minute chart and see if there's any big surprise element, but absolutely unlikely in my book. By surprise element, I would refer to if that is 30 points or something in five minutes. Then it would get really interesting, but I don't think the market's focus is on, on retail sales that much. So let's see what happens. Obviously, it will tell us about the consumer. And since the US is a consumer driven economy, this is also somewhat important. But nowadays, job market inflation data is just key, even though even the job market data is becoming less relevant. It's just a narrative that has worn off. And there's no new narrative really. So, what are the retail sales? There's also some import export data here. The retail sales obviously a little bit better than expected. 0.4 were expected, they got 0.6. There are more numbers here. This is without automotives. It's obviously also in line with the overall retail sales. There's some more data here and here that should come out as well. Import, export. I don't know, sometimes you don't really see what expectations were for some numbers. You can see here export prices month on month. They're actually lower than expected. So we can keep an eye on this while we are Looking at a 15 minute chart to uh, draw some intraday levels. So the open was here, daily open. And today it's almost not really worth drawing that much because we already know we are down a lot. So the midnight open is next. That's right here. We'll change the color for that. And then we just hit the 830 open, which is here. You can see this is suggesting a bearish market because price is just going nothing but down. Midnight, 830, same thing. 830. And midnight is right there. I didn't draw that properly. There we go. And then you typically measure um, these moves in the ES. It's just easier to work with four digits than with five digits in the NQ. This is midnight. So I'm interested in the point difference between midnight at 8.30. So here we're going from, let's say, 76 to 89. So that's fine. You know, that's like 13 points. If we had something like, I um, don't know, 20 points or something, then, you know, there's, there's a chance that certain opening strategies might not work that well. So what could be an opening strategy for this one? Well, it doesn't really look that interesting right now because there is not really a proper swing high above the midnight open. If there was, you could speculate that at the open in an hour, they might drive price all the way up to hit the level of that swing high, and then it might just ease back. That is a typical thing the market tends to do. But since we don't have anything after the midnight open that puts a swing high there in any of these guys, there's nothing to do, right? So this setup will not work today because it just doesn't exist. Um, the other thing we can we can look at since price stayed below the midnight open so much and didn't have any chance to really even get near it. You can talk about the heavy market today, right? So. You know, if I typically look at these 15 minutes 
candles and I would like to see a candle to close below a range right after the regular trading sessions open. So if we close below these lows, I might actually just short the whole thing, right? It would have been nicer to not, you know, swing up that much anymore, but just to stay more in a range, in a horizontal, like this one here with the YM, um, or this one here with, with the Russell. So that's, that's something for consideration later, if, if we really get, um, continued heavy heavy market at, on a 50 minute chart after the open if we really close below the law of the day law of the pre-market then you might just short it right away because then i think it might just plunge all right so that's that so we identified our levels we are looking at potentially heavy market um and we have to expect some chop during the regular session unless the market gets so heavy that it just trends down non non stop. That's my bias for today. And then we can look at um, some individual stocks. There's nothing with the Jesse Stein super stock scan, as always, there's nothing. Um, but unusual volume for yesterday, uh, you probably know, this is still a Trump company, I think so. Digital World Acquisition Corp, Shell Company. For me, this is this is a shell. This is, I don't think there's anything substantial. I think it's like, like an AMC or um, what's the other one called? You know, like a meme stock. Um, I know people can make a lot of money if they know what they're doing. I personally never put a single cent into shit like that. Um, this is an ETF. We're not interested in that. And it's Boeing. Like Boeing is falling like a stone. Every day they are down 8% now. So when the doors get blown out of air aircraft hulls, then that's what you get. Right? And with uh, that aircraft, they had obviously issues and fatalities before, so it's it's a shit aircraft, right? That they just hammer together. You can only, you only need to look at the turbines, how they don't fit, right? How they flattened them instead of having like round, you know, turbines or turbine shells, we should we should call it, right? So it's it's a crap aircraft and. Boeing is starting to pay the price for this. But I don't think that um, this is going to be that horrible. I think at some point buyers will step in and that's it. It's just what it is. It's actually interesting that um, um, production of the 747 jumbo jet uh, stopped or ended, we should call it ended, uh, last year. I think the last delivery was just a cargo plane, 747. So the era of the jumbo jet is over after they, they made it for more than like 50 years. And then Airbus, as we know, already stopped producing the A380, right? So all these, these huge aircrafts, um, they totally out of fashion, totally out of fashion. It's more like A350 and Dreamliner. This is, this is more what the aviation industry is looking for. So it seems with with COVID um, and this massive dent that was put in the aviation industry, um, the, the route to recovery is way, way longer. And there's, I, I don't know if there are any plans by any airline manufacturer to build something the size of what we had before. I don't think there is. Okay, so there's nothing there. Pre-market. Um, some China stuff is moving, yin and yang, right? Those are the ETFs. What is yang again? I think yang is bad, right? These are the bears. So the bears are up on China stocks, 10%. So if China stocks are going down, then obviously the risk appetite of the market is not very high, very big. No else in terms of gainers above 10% or anything. And it's the same with the decliners, right? There's nothing to do. Um, I think earnings season is going to kick off at some point. I think Alcoa 
who are typically one of the first um, stocks to report earnings. They have earnings coming out tonight after the close. Right? That's typically uh, typically the company that starts off the earnings season. It's just our core stuff. Oh, it's in the calendar. Let's take a look. There's the earnings calendar. So there are already a few names that you know you might know. There's there's Schwab down here, Kinder Morgan, um, some banks I believe, Discovery Financial. There's your Alcoa, Key, Fastener. There's a, there's a lot of names that will kick off earnings season. JB Hunt, Logistics, Schlumberger, Oil Services, Huntington, etc. That's just for the week. So the earnings season is, is going to get interesting, going to get started, and then there will be more pre-market moves that might be interesting uh, going into next week and the week after that. So let me just return on the five minute chart here to the, as you can see, retail sales, there's no impact. There's basically no impact. Um, since you're already looking at five minute charts here, I don't believe there's that much in terms of harmonics. This might have been a cipher. So if we draw a little, oops, if we draw a little bit, because we don't have anything else to do, right? As a six eight two, this is actually too low. One five. Yeah, you can make a case and see if this was a cipher or not. And Q. That looks a little bit cleaner, but I don't think the pullback was good enough. Or oh, it was four seven six. Yeah, and then it didn't quite touch it. Seven eight six would be a proper. Cypher level. Maybe it will still bounce. Then we can just leave that open. And we'll see what it does over, you know, the next little while. If it has bounce potential at all or not. Why M took out the low, I think. Oh no, not quite. Can turn into a butterfly going into the open. So just generating some ideas here. Just went back up. Okay. Could go down again. Needs to be measured here, measured properly. That would be one two seven two. I like to look at one four one four. So maybe that is of interest. I'm going to put an alert here. But I'm only going to trade this after the open. This is too late already now. Forty five minutes to go. Um, maybe it's not too late, you know, it's, yeah, it's five minute chart. You can still get your nine, nine candles. And if some of those things, they just go quickly, right? RTY, there's nothing here, I think. We undercut the pre-market low already. And this is what things look like. So this might still be interesting for now, maybe. But that's pretty much it. So, yeah, those are the levels. So there are a few alerts for today, obviously. Um, and that's pretty much it. No way to hit those alerts. So I'm not sure if I'm going to record today. Um, maybe. If you haven't watched it, you can watch yesterday's live trading session, two hours where there wasn't really that much to do um because we just didn't get a trend so that's what it is anything else let me just think about it no we looked at the calendar we were drawing our levels here um looking around a little bit i mean obviously we can also check if there's anything else in terms of levels 
that might be um, spanning across or anything in terms of trends, but there's no trend line here going sideways for a while. Same here. I am it's breaking, continuing to break lower. RTY as well. So maybe at some point, stuff like this could become interesting. So we just draw something here. Or maybe even on a on a four hour chart. Ah, that's still fitting that pretty okay. So don't want to make a science out of that. We just leave it as as it is. And then there are already some uh, some levels here where we might get support. So you can see the big pictures. It's a wedge. And um, we need to adjust it, actually. There we go. That's a wedge, right? Trading view keeps forgetting the adjustment setting. I don't know why. It's very, very annoying. So it undercut the wedge. It overcut the wedge. Is that a word? And then nothing really happened, right? So what is that wedge good for? Don't ask me. I don't know. Um, yeah, this one here is just, you know, there's nothing much to do. This this comes across from here. I'm still wondering why I put that in there. Still wondering why. Is that the weekly? This is not the weekly, is it? The weekly is here. Oh, that is no. What is this? What is that? Eighteen eighty-six. It's this one. I anchored that here. Hmm. Yeah, another weekly low, basically. A lot of stops might be sitting here. That's why it's there. Always good to verify these things. You can see it's really a strong, strong trend. Ever since yesterday, it's just going straight down. Just straight down. Down 1.6% almost. And I don't know, maybe we get a bit of a bounce down here. I don't know. But once something is down 1.5%, I'm not even trying to go long in this case. It's just it's just too heavy. Don't want to get burned. Of course, you can always have a reversal day, but what are the chances? They do happen, but not often, right? But yeah, we might get some support here. Situation. So using a um, trend line like this, maybe this can help a little bit once we might turn up again. But looking at the other stuff here, I mean, yes, you could also put that somewhere here in the YM, but it's already kind of difficult to find clean connecting points here. And it, it, it's just accelerating now. It's like in free fall almost, even though, you know, the daily changes are not dramatic, but um, the price is just going s just really straight down, right? I don't think there's much to draw here. And there's, there's really a void here. There's really nothing. Yeah, the other ones already looked at it, they're just going sideways, so nothing much to draw here. You always look also on hourly charts, see if there are any harmonics that might be taking shape here. I think you can draw certain things like, for example, let me just remove this for a second. It's going to be a mess now, but let's see what we get. Yeah. And uh, 
you can make a case for butterfly but we need to measure we might already have hit that level that's right there it's actually interesting it it coincides with the other one four one four do you see that that's actually interesting here as a level now because of a potential butterfly so since like the problem is we are just away from the open now 40 minutes away from the open i don't want to position myself even though this looks really interesting this might bounce here right this is a whole area now with you know this stuff you know spanning across um the regular extension for the day 1414 based on yesterday's session and butterfly trigger zone so I'm, I'm just going to leave that in here and see if we do anything in q you can probably draw something similar as well starting from here going there this is also butterfly this had a very high c leg and then we can also project is somewhere down here and look at this right you also get this sort of confluence right here with the butterfly now now things are more interesting it's always good to look around a little bit um i'm going to add an alert here as well so es and q we are kind of identifying stuff in the ym things are a bit more complicated right There was a lot of chop here, so not a big fan of it. RTY, yeah, it's just not that interesting. If you're very creative, you can try to also put a butterfly here, but there's so much chop. It's not clean at all. This is a little bit better here, but it's also not awesome. It's just something to watch. We're always looking for levels of confluence where then on a smaller time frame when we get the first candle in this example to show green and then we get follow through with the very next candle that's where i get into the trade just like yesterday so that's what that is okay guys i think this should do it for the pre-market meeting thing um yeah that's that's pretty much it so that those are the levels i'll be looking at today Thank you very much for watching. Take care and talk to you later. Bye-bye.